Sean, can you please add me as a co-host? Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just see if I could go ahead and share my screen really quickly. <clears throat> All right, good afternoon. I hope everyone is well. Hello and, and welcome. Let me make myself bigger a little bit and pretend like I'm sitting in that corner right there. Hello and welcome. Now, how many times have you heard the saying, you can't take it with you? Now, what do you think people say when they say that? Is it really directed towards you or are they just putting it on the side so you can hear it. Now, thank you for joining me today. My name is Chris Ritualo. I am a senior state and community engagement specialist for AARP California. Now, since AARP is, you know, I think the COVID-19 is almost over or almost there. Um, AARP is providing information and resources to help older adults and those caring for them. Now, with everyone almost done spending time, a lot of time at home right now, we thought this presentation might help those who are thinking about cleaning and decluttering and organizing their home. At the end of this webinar, you'll be able to walk away with 10 tips on downsizing and decluttering your home. So let me just make myself smaller as can be in the corner right there. So feel free to um, put your questions in the chat room. And also just a reminder that our session today is being recorded. Now, if you know who this person is, please feel free to use the chat room. And we're going to talk about him later at the end of our presentation. Well, actually, I mean, just give you the hint. It is actually King Potts, and we'll hear about him later at the end of our presentation. Now, we have two goals today. You'll be able to discuss why stuff is so important to some people. We're also going to list 10 tips for downsizing and decluttering your home. <clears throat> Now, this may be the last time we will have four generations still alive at the same time. For our oldest Americans, the age gap between their parents and, their, and themselves is about 20 years. And for the Gen Xers, they are about 30 years older than their kids. Now, at this moment in time, we have the two oldest generations in the position of wanting to pass their stuff to the two youngest generation, all right? <clears throat> so why does all this thing matter to you? There are several reasons. We are now facing the largest amount of people ever requiring healthcare services. There are two generations that have had pride to their stuff because of hard work and memories. There's an impending shortage of affordable housing for downsizing, and we all see that here in California. And the rising cost of healthcare means more services are being provided within your home. Now, the number one thing that really impedes people in leaving their home or getting out of their home or getting into their home or getting healthcare into their home is, of course, your stuff. 
Just a quick reminder, please put in your questions in the chat room and we'll address them at the end of our presentation today. <clears throat> now, in the 2017 National Care Survey, Good Run Research interviewed about 1,000 caretakers and the thing that caused the most stress was the staff. So we're going to talk about 10 tips. Tip number one, of course, include everyone in the house, your spouse, your partner, your kids, your grandkids, even your pets. I mean, everyone. Downsizing can be very massive. It's a big task for us. It's a lot of work. And enlisting members of your household will help you know that you are not alone in this project. If you live alone, rope in your family or even some friends to help you. So it is very important that some of us, or always remember that some of us have lived at home for more than 40 years. So really, it is not that easy to downsize ourselves by ourselves in one weekend. We need help getting this task done, even if you prefer to do it by yourself. It is very important to include everyone in the home, especially your kids, grandkids, if they live with you, and also understand that it is going to take some time. It is very important to not exclude your spouse or partner just because you think they don't want to help. So tip number two is called the 10 minute sweep. It can take a long time to clean up a room. Try to focus on baby steps, not one large room at a time. So just take the baby steps. This is the be best way to really clean a room. Look at the room as a whole. Look at a small two foot by two foot sections. Compare this to losing 50 pounds. If you try to do it in one week, it doesn't work. But if you focus on one pound at a time, you're more likely to be successful. I did that over the weekend. I rearranged my office at home and was able to get rid of many books that I have that I had for years and was able to donate them to the library. But make sure that everyone in the family or just yourself you live alone, pick at least two foot by two foot area and clean for 10 minutes each day. Not more than 10 or less than 10 minutes, not less than 10, not more than 10, so exactly 10 minutes each day. Try it at nighttime before your favorite TV show. Stay consistent five nights a week, every week, and you'll see that your home will start to look more organized after just a few weeks. Just remember that the clutter did not arrive in a day, so don't expect it to clean it in one day. Schedule time to work in your home, set a timer and applaud yourself or your family and friends at the end of each session. You may not be finished, but you have started and you have to keep going. Now, and probably if you know the answer to this, when is the best time to really unpack a bag after a vacation? If you're available to put that in, your, in, your, uh, in the chat room, feel free. When is the best time to unpack your bags after a vacation? So I'll give you the answer. The answer to that is, of course, right away or immediately. <clears throat> or the second answer that we normally have is right before your next trip. But really, it should be right away. But what we're looking for really is just, you know, if you get home, put everything away. Same goes for grocery. When you get home from the store, um, put everything away that you bought. Like yesterday, I went to the grocery store. I bought some chicken. I bought some canned goods. I went ahead and straight to the kitchen, put the chicken away, put those um, canned goods away where they're supposed to go. Now, 
we are sort of done with uh, with COVID or not really, but make sure to always uh, remember to wash your hands when you get home from the grocery store before you even um, before you even start touching those the food that you uh, that you put away, and of course right after you um, touch those those items that you bought at the store. <clears throat> Another number four, the number four one is of course, the number four tip is every item has a home. Don't let the stuff you bring home stack up. Put everything where it is supposed to go. Now, when I'm packing, make sure your groceries go in the kitchen, tools go in the garage, clothes go in the closet. Now, which bring me to another tip, which is called equal in, and equal out. Equal in and equal out means when you bring something new into the home, something of the same size comes out. Just because an item is on sale, it doesn't mean your home gets bigger. Tip number five is called the four pile sort. And I'm also going to make this a five pile sort. There's your keep, sale, donate, crash, and recycle, okay? That's number five, I added recycle. Number six, tip number six, dis distribute your legacy items now. Do we have china in the house, silver, jewelry, or other items that you are planning to leave to your loved ones? Distributing your legacy items now means you no longer have to tell your loved one you will give them something when you are gone. So many times we hear people say they want to wait, they want to wait to give something to their loved ones, to their children, their grandchildren, or others when they pass away. The reality really is you should give these items away now. Giving them away now lets you enjoy seeing them before you seeing them being used and it enters your house faster. You know, can you imagine going to your kid's home, you gave them this beautiful china and they're being used during the holiday. I think it brings joy to yourself and also to your family. But one caveat though, if you decide to go to this route, make sure you really want to give the items away now. And if you really don't, don't, don't say you will. So you just have to wait when you're ready to give those items away, but make sure you try to give it now. Give it away now. Now childhood memorabilia, such as your, um, your symbolic mementos, those, those that really spark memories and joy, try to digitize those images of, of other things. Like, so if you have baby pictures, um, you know, somebody actually said, yeah, they digitized those images and kept them. If you are in, in the, a faith where you have baptism and you wear those beautiful clothing, some family have actually uh, framed those and hanged them on the wall. And it comes become a memory, an, a beautiful memory, just hanging on the well in the wall instead of just sitting inside the closet. Another tip is, of course, avoid hunting. Ask it, ask your them if they want the items. Hunting is, is building the next generation into taking an item they probably don't want anyway. We often have furniture that we kept from our parents because we knew that they would be very upset if we didn't take it but we never actually wanted it. And we kept it out of obligation. Now, guess what? If you don't want it, the next generations also don't want it and they don't feel obligated to keep it. They just simply don't want it. And how do you find out if they want it? You ask them. If the person says, I don't want it, don't say, you just don't know what you want right now and save it for them in the future. So if they say, I don't want it, don't save it for them. They don't want it. Furniture, 
You know how many times I've been to people's home and they have their living room is full, full of furniture. That's called overfilling. The room with furniture, with furniture, full of furniture is called, sometimes that's our common tendency. Doing so makes the room really small and gives you more places to store and display more of your stuff. Start by eliminating a couple of pieces from a room and see how much more spacious it feels. Get rid of your furniture that you don't use. Sometimes people have two side tables connected together. Like, why do you need two? Just get rid of one and just leave one there, okay? So the next one is called, tip number eight is donate, donate, and donate. The reality really is there is always someone that needs it more than we do. Focus on finding a place you want to give something away to versus how much it's worth. For now, store these days would like you to donate in a designated room in your house. You know, things that you want to donate, make sure you put it in a designated room in your house or in your garage. Unless a book has a sentimental value or you're going to read it again, put it back into circulation via a yard sale or a thrift store so also others can enjoy it. Donate it to your library where you can always get free access to books, CDs, and DVDs. You can store countless e-books. E Many are available for free on an e-reader that's smaller than a single print volume, and you can easily digitize your music and movie collection. I had my coworker this morning came in and he told me that he's like, got his first library card. And he went there this weekend, he lives in Pharaohs. And did you know, he said, that they actually rent out power washers and things like that. So he got very excited to get his first library card. He went to the library and he found out he, he can rent not just books, but other things also. So those are the things that you might want to consider donating to the library. If you have them, you don't have a use for them, donate it there because other people like myself can use those items. <clears throat> so if you have any tips on decluttering your home, feel free to put them in the chat room so others can also learn from some of the work that you have done. Now be realistic with clothing and food. We often are not very realistic about our stuff. Now on the screen is a picture of an adult man's closet. To the left are his size 28, then moving are 30s and 32s, and a bunch of 34s, and finally only three pairs of size 36. Now there are 20 pair of pants here, and he admits that only three fit him. Why is he holding onto all these pants? Likely it's because he thinks, or many of us thinks, that we will get back into those other pants. The re reality really is, he probably will never wear those pants again, and it's okay to give away the size 28, the 32s, and the, 30s. Now, if your wardrobe has outgrown your closet and dresser, start by purging enough pieces so that everything will fit. Get rid of unwanted clothing at yard sales or online or by donating items to charity. Food is the same way. Those dates in the back that say it is expired, those are real. So why do we hold on to food? Why do we keep so much food in on a home, even if it's expired? Because our parents told us about the real hunger during the depression years. Now, here's a helpful tip. If you have moved twice, like I did, and took the food with you both times, like I did, it is probably expired. So this weekend again, that's what I did. Actually, I went 
into my refrigerator and clean up my refrigerator. And many of those items that I have were all expired. So I got rid of all of these expired items. The next tip is quite really important. So many of our uh, participants might want to um, listen wisely on this one because there's a lot of great information. We're going to talk about paper, books, mail, and photos. Paper is the hardest because it represents potential. Potential contacts, potential loss of friendships, potential dates, potential phone numbers, potential money and potential memories. It's all about potential. We naturally don't want to lose those things. So we hold on to those paper. Talk about files. Files. Consumer Reports advises organizing your important files into four categories, okay? First one, first category. Papers that you need to keep for the calendar year or less. Number two, papers that can be destroyed when you no longer own the items they cover. Number three, tax records, which you should save for seven years and papers to keep indefinitely. You can access copies of many documents such as your bills, your bank statements, user manuals on, on your online account. Now consider storing digitized documents on a web-based storage service or an external drive. I actually have a big external drive at home that I bought that I use it often for photos too. Now, really quickly, let's talk about banking and investment. That's when a lot of the four uh, categories come in. If you have banking or investment, if there's a possibility that you or your spouse will be applying for Medicaid, Medicaid for nursing home or nursing home coverage, in most cases, you'll need to produce five years of financial records such as banking, credit cards, and brokerage statements. So once again, if you or your spouse will be applying for Medicaid for nursing home coverage, in most cases, you'll need to produce five years of financial records. Do you know why? So that the government can look for any asset transfers that might delay your eligibility. Otherwise, keep banking and financial statements for a year except those issued for income-related purposes to provide the IRS with a record of tax-related transactions, okay? Now, your bank or credit card issuer may have statements going back several years online. If not, download its new statement and save it in a password protected folder in your computer or your external drive. Now, if you own stocks or bonds, keep records of any purchases for six years after, okay, so let me start this again. If you own stocks or bonds, keep that records of any purchases for six years after you file the return reporting the sale of that security, Again, in case the IRS thinks you've underreported your gains, six years. And dump all those shoe boxes of old canceled checks since the electronic versions of them are retained by your bank or credit union. We recommend shredding all mail if you have a micro shredder. And if you do not have a shredder, we recommend putting a cardboard box in the trunk of your car. And when you take your mail out in the mailbox, rip up the junk mail in small pieces and throw it into the cardboard box. This way, when it's full, you can drive it to a free shredding event and dispose of the contents safely. Now, pictures are another part of the paper conundrum. I'm going to lay some truth on you. You simply don't have to save all the pictures. 
helpful tip. If you don't know the name of all the people in the picture, then you don't have to keep it. Now, the best tip we have is to keep at least 100 pictures you'd like Write out the names of the people and the stories attached to the people in the pictures. And at the end of the day, this is not about the pictures. It's about the people and the emotions behind the stories. You know why you want to put those, those names and the, the, the events or the, in the stories attached to those photos. So maybe someday if you have somebody in the nursing home and they're getting to the point where they don't remember much. Maybe the photo will spark some memories for them. You bring the photo in front of them. Remember this, this was shown in the photo during our, the christening of his son or his daughter. This will really spark those memories for somebody that are losing their memory. So it really, really helps if you keep the names of the people and the stories attached to the people in the pictures. Now, this is something your family does care about. This is about the stories. Once again, my suggestion is to keep a hundred or so pictures in a few gallon sized lock bag, lock bags, like Ziploc bags. Write the stories on each picture once again and consider getting rid of the rest. You don't have to throw them away, but consider giving them to people who will treasure them. The main thing I hope you'll remember from the last 25 minutes is that it is all about the stories, the emotions, and people. And it's not about our stuff. So celebrate the stories and get rid of your stuff. Today, we talk about 10 different tips on downsizing and decluttering your home. Make sure you include everyone in your home. Talk about the 10 minute sweep. Do it every day for 10 minutes, not less than 10, not more than 10, 10 minutes. But talk about unpacking your bags, your, your vacation bags or your grocery bags that we need to unpack it right away. Remember that every item you bring into your home has a home. Talk about the four pile sort, and we included the fifth one. Keep, sale, donate, trash, and recycle. If your kids or your family members wanted this legacy item now, make sure you ask them first before you distribute those legacy items. Remember to always avoid the punting. Ask, ask them if they want it. That's the best way to find out donating everything that you don't need, and be realistic with clothing and food. And lastly, we talk about paring down papers and photos. Here are some um, resources that you can use. You know, if all fail, hire a professional organizer. Please feel free to take a photo of this because these are some really, really important um, websites that you can go to. To find a professional organizer in your area, consult the National Association of Professional Organizers, which is also at www.napo.net. And Lorraine says, clear home, clear mind, absolutely. You know, when I cleaned my, my master bedroom this morning, because I also have my desk there, it seems wider for some reason. I'm, I feel like, oh my God, something is missing. I don't know what it is, but it's too much. Um, yeah, you try to punt mom's piano, but they didn't want it. I mean, I would love a piano, but I cannot play a piano. So I don't know if I could use it. You know, somebody actually suggested about piano. If you really want to get rid of your piano and nobody wants it, give it to the school music, um, department, they might be able to use it also. Um, that's a great one right there, punting your mom's piano. Another one, of course, is we're going to your books, extra books that are in good condition. Chances are, are that someone will be really thrilled to get them. Um, 
Another good one is called Operation Paperback, which has been sending books to the military overseas and to wounded warrior programs and military families since 1999. So go to their website and they'll tell you a lot more information on how to donate to, donate to the military. Also clothes and accessories. Confinement shop may or may not be open right now, but Take your fancier duds or office wear once you retire to those consignment shops and make extra cash. Or you can donate them to Dress for Success and help someone looking for a job dress the part. And if your shoes are too sporty for Dress for Success, we have a place called soulforsoul.org. They usually take your sandals and sneakers and other gently used soles shoes and send them to people worldwide. Eyeglasses. Maybe your prescription change or I, I mine changes every year. Or you get some stylish new frames, but don't cost those old frames. The International Eye Care Center lists several organizations that will be happy to get rid of your old specs, either dropped off or mailed. You can also, many of this, you can also donate them to the homeless shelter because many of our homeless folks would need some eyeglasses, some clothes, um, especially this time of the year. Hearing aids. Oh, somebody mentioned that Lions, Lions Club take eyeglasses and assesses them to donate to those countries that have needs. Great idea. Thank you so much for that. Hearing aids. If you have upgraded your hearing aids, you know, I have a tinnitus. I'm not sure if you're familiar with tinnitus, which is a constant ringing of the ear 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 a day. So I have this ringing always going on. So my doctor suggested that I have a hearing aid to mask that noise. And, you know, so I said, okay, uh, let me do that. So I went to the, the ear doctor, the hearing aid doctor, and it was $3,000 for a pair of hearing aids. Can you imagine? Luckily, I have insurance that I was able to pay for those hearing aids, $3,000. No wonder many people cannot hear because they're not able to afford hearing aids. But if you have an extra one, please feel free to donate them to hearingaidsdonation.org. Another thing is of called is also household items. Most cities, most area, most states have Goodwill or Salvation Army that will pick up certain items for donation. Make sure you always call and check their policies. But another organization, national organization to consider is pickuppleads.org. Did I put that website in there? Pickuppleads.org. So let me put yes, the... Um, the website in the chat room is called pickuplease.org. So that way uh, you have it. Okay. So they are going to be able to pick up your, um, your items and they also go specifically help veterans. You must check to see if they service your area though, okay? Another option is called Habitat for Humanity Resource, R-E-S-P-O-R-E-S, that accepts new and gently used appliances, household goods, furniture, even building materials from individuals and companies, accepting them for sale. Now, the funds are used to help people in need. Uh, pickuplease.org, I think, I'm not sure if they're only located in USA, so might want to check it out if they are only in USA. There's a quite a rem on phones, the, the average American buyer buys a new phone every two years instead of leaving their, them in a drawer or sending them to some landfill. There's an amazing amount of good you can do by donating your old phone. So I think the list on the website that I posted, the electronics.house.works.com will give you more information on donating your cell phones or your phones. There's a reminder though, 
regarding your medication, never flush expired medicine away. It pollutes the environment. Instead, check your local drugstore for a take back program. For certain medications like opioids, check your local police station for a disposable bin on their premises. Always, always scratch or mark over identifying labels before disposing of drugs. Mm -hmm. I do that also on the, um, when I throw away my uh, container with drugs, take those out, those labels. Sometimes I actually shred them. Now, exercise caution with, with pickups at your home. Make sure you confirm with whatever agency when the, when the pickup will take place and who will do it. Find out who it is, find their name, get the phone number, ask for identification or confirmation. And many police stations offer a safe exchange zone. So if it's not, if it's big enough or small enough that you can actually carry with you, bring it with you to the police station for the safe exchange zones on the premises. Okay, the best way to do it. So let's see right here. So please feel free to share some of your ideas. Um, in, in the chat room. So let me give you a quickly about, somebody wanted to know more information about the phones. Feel free to um, take a photo of this. And the, on the board, on the, in terms of old phones. So feel free to also take a photo of, of our presentation today on this one, on these resources. Let me see if I can usually are able to attach a file, so I guess I could not. So I can actually send something to ACC in terms of resources that will have all those information and they can share it with you after the presentation. So if you have any tips on downsizing and decluttering, uh, make sure to put it in the chat room or feel free to unmute yourself and there is some question that happened that was brought up to me before that I can never really find a great answer to regarding grocery plastic bags. I mean, are they being recycled right now? I know I reuse mine all the time. I bring it with me in the grocery store, but somebody asked me, and if you have an answer to this, if you have the tip to how to recycle, uh, grocery bags, please feel free to put it in the chat room because I don't know. I really don't know because I use it all the time on, on many uh, occasions. Um, so, so in the end, remember we talk about King Tut in the very beginning. Uh -huh. um, there was a picture of someone that did, did he took everything with him. Okay. King Tut took everything with him. So on this screen, screen, the photo on the left is what was found in King, King's tomb, his so-called garage. The image on the right is an image of your everyday garage, cluttered and full of stuff that looks like my garage. King Tut couldn't take it all with him and neither can we. So we have some, um, Information on plastic grocery bags can be recycled at certain Walmart store. Thank you for that. That's a great, great suggestion. Great tip. Target stores also take plastic bags. Thank you. So Target, Walmart, and then I think keeping clutter can be a form of min mental health. It can be like a lot to get rid of sentimental items, but finding a special place for them to look at or take out from a memory box can be a very beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely. Like I mentioned earlier, like the the uh, the, the, the clothes they wear during their great christening, those are so beautiful, especially in the Asian community in my family. We have those, and now it's hanging on the wall. If you have carpet. If you have carpet that are very expensive and you don't want to get rid of them, some people have actually framed those carpet in their homes. So they have them hanging on the wall. 
Yeah. Another suggestion people have regarding the, gross, uh, the, the grocery bags, Rayleigh's also takes the grocery stores, um, the grocery bags. You share your food packages with family and friends. Thank you for that. You know, I actually, when I, mean, I used to live in Seattle, my neighbor, she was an older lady. She lived by herself. And when she, I used to share a lot of my uh, food to her because she, she was by herself. I used to buy groceries for her. She was all by herself. And so, yes, yeah, great, great tip, great idea on sharing your food packages with family and friends. Um, every time I go to work, every morning, uh, there's a lot of homeless people on the street. I used to give them my jackets and my blankets and some of my cookies that I have at home that I can never eat anymore. I don't want or shouldn't eat. I give them away to them. Um, remember also dog food. If you have friends or know people that are in need of dog food, please give them to them. It's getting so expensive right now. I went to grocery store yesterday and I was I was like amazed how everything was. Everything was so expensive. So please, there's so many people out there that may have can can really enjoy those things that you already have. Now, <clears throat> there are simple ways really to declutter your spaces. Start by removing your trash. Begin by choosing one small area to organize like a drawer. Start with that, like your kitchen drawer. Sort items into four piles. Now remember we talked about this, but we added a recycle, but there are keep, sell, donate, toss, and recycle. We talk about finding a specific home for everything you intend to keep. For example, a hook for your keys. I I've actually installed a hook for all my keys right by the garage door. Group similar items together instead of storing them in multiple places. So you always know where to find them. I've used some, um, um, the bags actually, or, or plastic um, container to put all like different screws, uh, batteries, and, and stuff so everything is all organized um if you buy something new pledge to get rid of something else to limit items in your home oh my video is off there you go you can see me let me go <clears throat> so you can see me better i hope you can see me now so like i mentioned if you buy something new, pledge to get rid of something else to limit items in your home. Now, if you're holding on to items to pass to the next generation, ask yours, ask them if they want the items like we talk about. Be prepared for them to say no and be gracious about it. Don't get mad. Don't be upset. Don't be offended. Don't try to do everything all at once. Schedule limited amounts of time to work on decluttering and downsizing and organizing on a regular basis. That's all I have today. So feel free to have questions in the chat room or some more tips. Now, I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank you again for joining us today. Thank you to ACC for organizing wonderful events that they have. I hope you really enjoy this workshop and I hope that the information you will be of value to you. Remember, we're doing um, a March uh, event in part ARP and ACC partnership are partnering together to do a March event. It's called Lunch, Tour, and Learn How to Play Mahjong. If you are in Sacramento or somewhere close by ACC, make sure to sign up for that lunch, tour, and learn how to play Mahjong. I would love to learn how to play Mahjong, so I don't know how. Now, for relevant coronavirus information and resources, make sure you visit the cdc.gov forward slash coronavirus and aarp.org forward slash coronavirus. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you have a wonderful day.
I'll stay in for a few minutes, for a few more minutes, and maybe people have questions. And if you have any questions in the future, reach out to ACC and they can forward me everything. 10 minute sweep, it's a great idea. Yes, it's a wonderful idea. You know, also I remember I told you that your pets, make sure you involve your pets in many of your decluttering. My, I have a dog, she's cute, she's small, but she's grown. So she's, just, she's got clothes that I really need to get rid of. She's got so much toys that I need to get rid of. I just couldn't have, I don't have that feeling that I want to get rid of them because she's my dog. But eventually I need to because she's got so many toys she doesn't play with. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, well, thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm trying to always update it because um, there's a lot of new stuff going out there every day, every week. There's some new things about decluttering and downsizing. You no, know, and we just have to remember everything is all about memories and potential. I have many business cards that I have no clue who they are. I got rid of them. Four piles, it's called sort. Oh, let me go back. It is called sort, keep, sale, donate. Keep, sale, donate, toss. So there's four piles. Keep, sale, donate, toss away, and recycle. Remember, if you want to keep and you're trying to sort, make sure the keep is further away from you, like really, really far, maybe in the other room. So you don't want to keep those. You're like, well, I have to wake into the other room. I have to walk to the other room to keep this item. Might as well donate it. Make sure you really want to donate it. Make sure you want to sell it. Make sure you want to toss it away. For some reason, stuff that I put it in this black, um, plastic bag that I don't see what's in there. It works for me, you know. I put it in the bag, I don't see it anymore. If I wanted to donate it, sell it or toss it away, it's sitting there. Um, I had many shoes that were sitting in the garage during summertime for some reason, um, started peeling. So those obviously I have to get rid of this weekend too. The 10 listings of declutter, let me see if I could share that with you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So the very end. Oops. There you go. There's are the ten tips on decluttering your home, include everyone in your house, including your pets, the sweep, unpacking your bags. That includes your grocery bags. Every item has a home. Everything has a home. Four pile sort and number five, we added recycle. Keep, sell, donate, trash, toss away, and then recycle. Distribute your legacy items now. Avoid punting, meaning to say you just want to give it away. Avoid punting. Ask it if they want to get if they want it. Donate, donate, donate. Be realistic with clothing and food. Tear down on papers and photos. Will we get a copy of the recording? I think I'm not sure if ACC is has a copy of the recording. Maybe um, Sean can. Chime in on that. So I'm not sure. Yes. Um, so this will actually is being recorded. I'm going to post it on our YouTube channel right after uh, we are done with this. Um, I'll put in a link to our YouTube channel um, in the chat box for you to check out. Wonderful. So, and if you um, can, Sean, can you reach, reach out to me for some more resources? I, or can I just send it to you and you, they can reach out to you for, I, I, there's, I have a, a list of more resources, not just the one that I showed today. I'll send it to you so you can share it to everyone if they ask for it. Okay, 
Um, I'll put in my email address also in the chat box for anyone who is asking for any of the materials also. Oh, good. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you so much. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, no, I'm just wondering if you have... Hi, because I'm in London. Oh, wow. Um, so... Um, yeah. But, so how did you, you find out? Apply, these addresses, would they apply to England? Say that again, sorry. Uh, um, I'm wondering if there's the addresses will still be the same for England, like the, the what you're sharing now, you know, for the information. Oh, you mean the address for for the the resources? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just reach out to them. So, so you know, I have don't have much information on international resources, but look and see if you have some resources, but the ones, the military ones, try and see that. I'm sure you can donate to the military ones that we have in terms of resources. Uh -huh. Yeah, try that one. Um, I think the one, the operation uh, paperback, that one I'm sure they can, um, you, you're able to donate their books. So I'm gonna put that link in the chat room. Okay. I'm sure if you have those, I wonder, I'm not sure if you have dress for success in England. You probably do, I'm sure you do, probably maybe something the same. So that's right there. Um, you know, so try and see if you have some, some organizations that would do that for you, that accept those items. But I'm so glad you joined us. So how did you find out about our presentation today? Sorry, I was just trying to screenshot. Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah, just from a WhatsApp group I'm in actually, um, a WhatsApp group, art group. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah, wonderful. I'm glad you could join yeah. us. All right. So let me see. I mean, Lorraine, Lorraine is on here. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, Lorraine, who shared it, she's on here now as well. Oh, fabulous. She wants to say hello. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you could join us again in the future. Make sure you... um. You watch out for ACC's um, uh, announcement. They have so many, so many stuff that they uh, offer the community. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful week and stay safe. And we'll chat again. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>